Hello, hello, welcome to Racer Diaries. Now, I know, I know, I know, I was supposed to do this ages ago. I was supposed to have it as a recurring thing on the channel and yada yada yada. I was supposed to get um, racing as in join a, a proper sanctioned BRCA club again, as well as start our own uh, little miniature for fun touring car club that we used to run. Those things are still on the cards, but you know, life sometimes gets in the way. But we are sort of moving towards that now, hopefully. Today, I'm going to treat my favourite RC, my Lossy Triple XS, to some nice things. First of all, we have a Bitty Design Ascari body shell. And the reason I chose this is because it's quite clearly modelled on an Alfa Romeo. Um, so I'm going to spray paint it the same sort of colour as my Alfa Romeo. Although this is some sort of... It's unsanctioned, it's not an actual Alfa Romeo, it's just very much based on one. Um, it kind of looks like a cross between the 159 and the Julia, whereas obviously mine's the 156. Incidentally, if anybody knows where I can get hold of uh, an officially licensed 156 body shell, please let me know. I would love to get hold of that old HPI one. I used to have an HPI racing one years ago, and it's really spot on. But all I can find is 200mm wide ones now, no 190s, which I obviously need. So if you know anybody who has an unopened, brand new, 190mm HPI 156, or equivalent, no, it doesn't need to be the HPI one. There's a couple of Tamiya ones on the internet, on eBay, but they weren't like 150 quid for a body shell. They can just, with that. So anyway, um, yeah, just let me know. I've cut the spoiler off this already, because I'm going to spray paint the spoiler black. The colours I'm using are Tamiya, what do they call this, translucent red. Yes, PS37 translucent red. Backed by, now this is a really nice silver, it's so nice that I almost decided to spray the, sil the shell silver anyway. But I'm definitely going to use this colour at some point in the future for something. It is, uh, where is it, there is it, PS48 semi-gloss silver anodized aluminium. Um, I've seen pictures of the internet, on the internet of cars spray this, it's gorgeous. And then it's just backing it with PS5 black. The other, well it's not really, the body shell's not really a modification, it's just treating my car to something nice. The body shell is supposed to be for uh, high grip carpet and I run this car on wood, but only the pros worry about that sort of stuff. Yes, a new set of shock absorbers. These are the Lossa 5301 sedan shock set. They're exactly the same shocks are on my JRXS Type R. Um, the only weak point left for this car are the shock absorbers. These are not good. Um, they've always worked fine, the car's always handled well, um, but I'll explain that when we get to that point. First part is the body shell, so we should just crack on. As you can see, I've already done the complicated part, which is the part I hate. And now it's just the spray painting part, and let's hope I don't screw it up. Alright then, I hope you're looking forward to seeing what the paint looks like once I peel the film off. So, let's get cracking. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, not, not the spoiler. Right. No, sorry. Okay. I'm actually looking forward to seeing what this paint colour looks like uh, once I peel this off. Although I know that there are many imperfections. Many imperfections because, obviously. So, there's some bleed around the windows. I don't mind so much for that. I can use a, a sharp knife to sort of scrape, scrape that and straighten that off. That's not a problem. A few splatters on the bonnet there. Again, not a problem because I could. Put, I was going to put a big sticker over the bonnet anyway. Um, there has the problem. What 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 I did see when I was spray painting was um, some of the moisture hadn't fully dried off from washing it, and there was a, a drip that I didn't notice. And then uh, the paint wasn't sticking, so I had to dry that off and then dry again. And hopefully I've covered it, but we'll wait and see. Anyway, enough chatter. Let's see if I can get this peeled off. I am looking forward to seeing the color, even if I've not done a very good job of it. If I can find a corner to peel, 
Oh, 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 come, quit. There, oh, would you? Will you? Ha ha, ha 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 ha. Right, are you ready? Oh my goodness, even already. Wow. Oh, holy crap. What a color. Oh, it looks so good. Oh my goodness. Yes, the bleeds are bad in the window. That color. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, that's stunning. That is utterly stunning. Oh, I'm so glad that I picked this. Look at it. That looks so good. That looks so good. Oh, oh. So, um, yes, uh, some paint splatters on the bonnet. I don't know if the camera will pick them up. There, yeah, you can see them. Um, I'll cover that with a sticker. Uh, the drip was in the front bumper there, but it... I can't see it. It looks all right. Oh. Um, yeah, what I've done, as you probably noticed, is I've got a black spoiler. The, the, wing, the wing end plates are actually in the, the, the rear arch there, so I'll have the sort of metallic red end plates. Uh, uh, it's funny, I'm like, oh, I need to get a colour, the same sort of colour as my real Alfa Romeo. No, this is way better. I haven't said that, my real Alfa Romeo in the sun looks stunning. Um, and I'm glad there's less blemishes on my real car than on this. But that's fine. You know what? Shh. It's, yeah, it's not a shelf, it's going to be a race car, and um, it's all good. Well, almost all good. The problem is, there's a great big aerial tube. I actually do plan on upgrading this car to have a 2.4 gigahertz system in it. Not just because, oh, I fancy modernizing it, but because... Um, I've got this, it's a 40 megahertz system that's on it. I really like this transmitter, although not as much as the old Acom's Techni Plus. Um, there's a very small, but definite and noticeable delay when you apply the throttle or if you apply steering on this car. It could be down to the old Mtronics speed controller, which has been in the car for... Oh, 16 or 17 years, maybe? And, and this, about the same, but I think it's probably the receiver. I mean, it might not be, it might be the speed controller, but it's one of the two. Um, this is the receiver here, the Novak Extra. This was really trick back in the day, because what you did is, if you remember, some of you might be new to the hobby, as you probably don't know this, but you used to have to be aware of who's around you with their RC cars in case you interfere, and you had crystals. So here's the crystal here. And it started at 27 megahertz, and you had like crystal 1, crystal 2, crystal 3, crystal 4. I think it went up to about crystal 7. Oh, you did get 1.5 and 2.5. Quite wide bandwidth. And they would interfere, so you had to make sure you had different crystals. And you got 40 megahertz, what this is. Slightly more advanced, narrower bandwidth, so you could get more people. But you still need to make sure you're on different frequency. Um, you'd have a corresponding crystal in the receiver to the transmitter. This was a trick speak, uh, speak controller receiver because it had to see the dials on it. The, that's the orange part there. Um, you could adjust this to adjust to match a frequency, so um, you didn't need to change the, the frequency on the receiver, you just adjusted it. You didn't need to change the crystal, rather, there was no crystal. So that was quite cool. Novak, Novak don't exist anymore, but they won more championships than anybody else. They were really good. I don't know how they managed to go bankrupt, I don't know the thing behind it. But anyway, the point is, I do want to put a, a brother system in this. And, well, I do want to do a brother system, a 2.4 gigahertz system. I'm getting really confused today. 2.4 gigahertz system, right? I want to put that in there. I also want to go brushless, but eventually. And uh, I'd rather not cut a hole in my new body shell if I'm just going to replace it with 2.4 that has a short area and I don't need a hole anyway. So this might just force my hand to just finally get on with it and get a 2.4 system. Problem is, I don't... I haven't come across... Because yeah, I like the stick radio when I'm racing. I haven't come across a stick radio 2.4 system I like yet. I don't like the Carson Reflex. It's, it's got way too much play in the sticks. It feels really cheap and nasty. Um, the uh, Etronics Pulse system is okay, but mm, it's not really for me. There is a Futaba one I fancy trying, but it's 50 quid. But I might just bite the bullet and go for it because I did get my bill from the accountant today and it's a lot less than I expected, so yeah, maybe I'll just do that. 
talking about brushless system, we are planning on going racing again with this with this club, um, with our sort of fun club, as I said. Um, and we do plan on eventually migrating everybody over to 13.5 turn brushless and lipos. I reckon though, this this is a Revenge of the Monster Pro stock motor 27 mega uh, 27 turn. This was about the best 27 turn stock motor ever. Probably the best. I've got. A, I'll show you what it looks like. I've got another one. This one's been retired now. It's been retired. This is a dual magnet version. The one that's in this was the final version, the quad mag magnet version, which is, you know, supposed to be better. But this dual magnet one was an absolute beast. Um, because you see the dyno printout is on them all. Go on, focus. 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 Mm, okay, no. Well, that kind of works. There's a dyno printout on them all. And, um... So when we're at Tay Racers, which is what Tay Models used to be, they used to do race stuff. Um, basically, we went through the box of them and picked the one with the highest ratings, the most power, the most RPM, the least efficiency, but you know the most power, the most torque it has RPM, power, efficiency, torque, and part number. I think. Um, so basically, we picked the best one, and it was a, an absolute monster, Revenge of the Monster. It was a beast, and. Um, all the trophies behind me on the shelf were all won by this motor. But it's now been retired because it, I've skimmed it that many times. There's no material left on the, the commutator. So I can't skim it anymore. So that's a goose. It's finally gone. Um, after over fif about 15 years of service, I got out of it maybe. Maybe a little bit less than that. Anyway, I want to see what the quad magnet one, because it, it should be as good. I mean, it technically should be better, but I can't see that being because this was, this was an exceptional one. Um, I would like to see how this would stack up against a brushless system, a 13 and a half turn brushless system. They would have to be working pretty hard, I think, to to, uh, to drop this old stock motor. It's that good. So it'd be pretty fun to, to sort of snap at the heels of a brushless car and see what you could do. So I don't want to change this to brushless yet, but I'd like to go for 2.4 gigahertz system. I actually can't um, fully complete this shell today anyway. I can cut it out and put the, the stickers on, but I have more stickers on the way because I didn't have any lossy stickers left or anything. I would love to get a hold of some Triple XS stickers, but I can't find them anywhere. Uh, they're long, long gone. Maybe get Alan to make some, possibly. Um, yeah, but I've got some Team Lossy stickers on the way. I've got the Bitty Design stickers. I don't... I would like to put Speed Controller and Motor Manufacturer stickers on this, but I don't know what brush system I'm ever going to end up with eventually. I was planning on fitting a Speed Passion Triple M motor to this eventually because that's what I have in my GRXS Type R and it'd be, you know, I think it'd be good to have them producing exactly the same power so that they're at the same speed therefore I can get comfortable with them both at the same time not that it matters too much but it would just be a good idea but you can't get them anymore so I don't know what speed controller or what motor I'm going to go for now so yeah, I'll need to leave spaces on the, on the body shell anyway. So I will do the body shell at a later time. That looks so good. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> that colour's awesome. Right. Might as well peel off the uh, spoiler as well. Let's see what uh, finish. I, I use what I usually do with uh, spoilers is they come. I mean, they come attached to the thing like this. They come to attach that way, so you spray them from underneath, right? That becomes the top of the spoiler when it's mounted. And I usually ignore that. I usually spray from this side, so there's no peel-off film, and just hope you don't get splatter. Because that means that this side isn't the painted side, and it's the shiny side. Because that's one that you look at most. Uh, and also, if you do reposition stickers, there's no chance of peeling paint off. But this time I didn't didn't do that. I went normal normal way. Yep, nice enough. Nice and shiny. See, it's shinier now. This is the non-painted side. See how shiny that is. And then on the painted side, the one you look at more is not as shiny. It's still pretty good, but it's also got a more old effect. Whereas this is really smooth. Um, but that's just how it is. You won't notice. You won't notice it. But that'll be cool on the on the red car, the black spoiler. With red end plates, that would be cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Right. Down to the technical side of this video. Basically, the one weakness of the XXS, the shock absorbers, 
It's a fantastic car, this. Okay, there is another there is another weakness nowadays, which came about later, and that's the fact that LiPo batteries, this is not just this car, all old touring cars like this. LiPo batteries are lighter than nickel metal hydrides. This car is designed to balance out the weight of the electronics with a nickel metal hydride. But now you put a LiPo in this, with the brushless system, the weight's all going to be to this side, rather than nice and even. So you need to add weight to it to balance it out. Uh, anyway, but the big weakness is are, are the shock absorbers. They are very basic in design. Rather than a normal shock absorber where you've got the, um, the diaphragm or the bladder at the top to seal it off, so you trap air above it, and but the, but the cavity below, the actual shock cylinder below is full of oil with no air whatsoever. So you can get the piston moving up and down and it's dead smooth and there's no chance of air bubbles. But because you've got air above the bladder, it allows the bladder to move up and down because obviously if it's completely 100% full of liquid, um, because the piston, although although there's holes in it for displacement, um, it's not fully free running, that's why you get resistance. So you wouldn't be able to move it. Uh, it would blow the caps off, basically. Um, the point is, these don't have that. These shocks are literally just an empty cavity. There's no bladder in them, there's no bleed uh, valve or anything. So you have to leave air in these shocks when you build them. You have to. You can fill them almost to the top, but there will be a little bit of air. Because if there, there's air, if it's not, there's no air at all, then they don't move. So you need a little bit of air in them. Problem is, if the plunger manages to find itself above that, touching the air, it will drag bubbles back down with it, and you will get bubbles in your oil and all the rest of it. It's always handled well, but it's always been a weak point. That's the main issue. The other issue is you can see there's just collars on them. There's no uh, threaded shock collars. There's no, oh, I'm going to adjust the height here. You have to use this uh, Allen key screw, uh, grub screw, Allen key grub screw in there. Adjust that, slacken it off, move up and down, tighten up again. That's fine, except they're now completely stripped. So, um, especially at the back, every now and again, one of them will release during a race, and then the spring will go boing, and the car will handle all over the place. Um, it's not too bad, but it is a weakness. I wasn't going to bother because these were 50 pounds. But they were literally, literally the last ones left. I could not find this shock set anywhere. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build these and fit these. Put the same weight of oil, 40, TLR 40, I've been running in here. Same ride height, same springs. Basically what I need to do is build them, fit one, Remove one, fit one, match it to the other side, make sure it's all sitting right, and then remove that and fit the other one, and do the same for the back. So, that's what we will do. Oh, let me tell you, these are the smoothest shocks I've ever assembled. Oh, just, oh, they're even better than the body shell color. Oh, they're just amazing. Right, what I need to do is, um. Like I said, put one on, one at a time, match it to the other side, and then take the, old, the other old one off, and yada yada yada. I put 25 weight in. When I said 40 weight, something in my head said, no, oh, that doesn't sound right. Um, so I just checked my old uh, setup sheets, and yeah, 40 was too heavy. It was, a, it was between 20 and 30 I used to run on wood, on wood surface. So 25 I've gone for. We'll see uh, See how it handles. Oh, they're just, <clears throat> they're good. Okay, change of plan. Change of plan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a set of JRXS springs with the same damping rate as the Triple XS oranges and the Triple XS yellows because the Triple XS has got a larger bore of shock and spring than the JRXS and the Type R. And these are obviously JRXS shocks. So it's loose in the collars. Different color size. Spring cups are a different size, quite considerably. You probably won't be able to see that, but they're quite different. And the actual shaft bore, the shaft diameter is smaller on the on the newer cars as well. So I could force it to fit, I've got loads of spares upstairs. But I'd rather it was done right, done perfect. So for the cost of finding some springs, I do have some springs upstairs for the GRXS, but they're I believe higher rate. I don't want to put high rate springs. This needs soft setup. This is for a slippery floor. 
So I'll find this rate, I'll match it, get the right stuff, and then it'll just run GRXS shocks for the rest of its life, which are better shocks anyway. So what I'll do is, sometime in the near future, I'll do a follow-up video for this, and you'll have the right shock and spring set up, and you'll see the body shell mounted, fed with all the stickers and everything, and it'll be something nice to look forward to. So in the meantime, thank you for watching, take care of yourselves, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.